In the past, whenever an artifact or ancient ruin was to rear its unexplainable head, funded parties would scramble to quickly rebury them within museum archives or to simply ignore and not publicly share such discoveries. As such, many of the sites that we cover here upon our channel are not only notoriously difficult to track down and study, but are also very often unfamiliar to our many viewers. One continues their way through the same journey as you and I, by perusing the many subjects we have already covered. The feelings of confusion as having never been confronted with said locations and data therein actually becomes a sense of predictability and a symptom of a much larger conspiracy. As we push on with more and more sites and artifacts, further compounding the proof of this cover-up and deepening our evidential arsenal regarding this ignored and in some cases suppressed history upon our planet, it is inevitable that sooner or later the movement will indeed begin to move. And this is our mission. The Inga Stone, located in the middle of the Inga River in Paraiba State, northeast of Brazil, an artifact like any other which has an unexplained and possibly controversial history is little known to the world. It is a rock formation which covers an area of approximately 250 meters squared. However, upon this enormous rock is an unknown language with quite possibly an untold story. 46 meters long and 3.8 meters high, there are etchings made all over this stone whose meanings, although extensively studied by some of the best minds on the planet, remain unknown and undeciphered. Several figures are carved in low relief, illustrations of animals, fruits, and human constellations like Orion and our very own Milky Way can be seen. Scholars presume that it was created by natives that lived in the area until the 18th century, although any compelling evidence to support this claim has yet to surface. Thought to depict animals, fruits, weapons, humans, possible ancient aircrafts or birds, and what appears to be a table of contents, with stories divided into sections with each symbol connected to the number of a chapter, what it says is not known. Ignatius Rolum, professor of Greek and Latin theology, argued the symbols were similar to ancient Phoenician carvings, while others felt the symbols were related to ancient ruins. An additional popular hypothesis is, of course, ancient aliens, since the Inga's symbols were so different to any others found. Some researchers, such as Claudio Quintans of the Parabeno Center of Ufology, has postulated that a spaceship landed in the Inga area during this ancient time, and the symbols were probably drawn by these extraterrestrial guests. An incredible stone, with a history we may one day unravel. Elongated skulls have been unearthed in many places on Earth, linked to ancient cultures globally. To this day, artificial practices of accomplishing this striking deformation can be witnessed among remote tribes in certain parts of the world. Thanks to this, and indeed the remains that have been found and studied previously, we not only now understand how this elongation is artificially accomplished, but also anomalies found on some specific and rather special specimens. For example, if one exhumes the remains of the ancient civilization of the Han culture, one is able to establish many things regarding the past technique. The individual skull which endured said practice, this can often be done by tracking the cranial napping found upon all human skulls. However, what makes others so intriguing for example, the Paracas skulls, or the lost believe stolen skulls of Malta, this napping that one would expect to see is either absent or, if present, not of a deformed nature, suggesting that the previous owners of these craniums had this naturally from birth, leading to many hypothesizing that they were either a now lost subspecies or possibly an ancient alien visitor. If we track the provenance of these beings, one can also argue this increased cranial mass as a possible contributing factor in increased intelligence. Many of the ancient pharaohs of Egypt exhibit this, 
and indeed the skulls found at the ruins in Malta, with its astonishing acoustic properties. Their burials evidence of them once being valued members of these societies, but also the possible contributors to the advancements in technology and architecture found at these sites. The most unusual, however, those with no evidence of binding, have been found at many prehistoric sites, such as the so-called alien mines along the banks of Lake Superior. Lloyd Pye has also made a lucrative business promoting the discovery of a curious humanoid skull he found a few years ago. Although not dismissed as a deformity, many still strongly believe it to be that of a human-alien hybrid. Regardless of the artificial binding which still occurs, questions remain. Why do some of these skulls appear to have been natural? Why is the ancient practice undertaken? Who inspired it? Why were the exquisite skulls of Malta stolen? Are we really looking at the remains of ancient alien visitors? It is an area of historical research which we find very intriguing. Who were the ancient pharaohs of Egypt? We have postulated on many occasions that the evidence to suggest the Great Pyramids are far older than currently attested, and as such, far outdate those who academia currently claim as the builders, is not only overwhelming but mounting by the day. The question as to who their constructors were remains elusive. Another enigmatic mystery still to be answered, if one goes by this premise, is who were the mysterious figures who have been found dotting the Valley of the Kings? Were these jewel-adorned mummified individuals the actual original constructors of these awe-inspiring as yet unexplained ancient ruins? Not only is there strong evidence to suggest that the Great Pyramids themselves were built with an enormous exoskeleton of blocks stretching far into the thousands of tons, but that casing stones which now encase these original blocks are indicative of no less than two later stages of building, which we believe were in an attempt to conserve that which still remains at the site. It is undoubtable that whoever accomplished the original building of the miraculous structures, for an as yet unexplained reason, had a tremendous intellect, far eclipsing that of modern man. It is interesting then to note that many of these ancient pharaohs, although rarely shared by academia, seemingly possess craniums far larger than that of our own human skulls. This extra size could be an indicator of a far greater brain mass than that of us, and thus a far greater intellect, possibly making this mysterious group of leaders, each possessing an elongated skull, likely candidates for being able to have accomplished that which we now look upon as seemingly impossible achievements of ancient architecture, often concealed by their headdresses depicted on the many surviving statues of these individuals, which has allowed academia, and indeed the many museums who display such ancient art, to conveniently overlook that which lies beneath. Elongated skulls have been found all over the planet. Interestingly, or rather compellingly, found within close proximity to the many now unexplained ancient ruins found all over Earth. Were we visited by these beings? subsequently, due to their enormous intellects, becoming our leaders? And due to their astonishing capabilities, once perceived by ancient man as gods? Additionally, many ancient, still surviving tribes still practice a form of head binding. The question is, where did these techniques originate from? Who inspired such practices? And were they in an attempt to replicate the appearance of the gods? Elongated skulls, clearly as a result of these practices, are also found at sites around the world. Yet these skulls are easily identified as that of humans. This due to the recognizable cranial napping or stitching of the skull, present upon all humans as a growth pattern. However, those of the Egyptian pharaohs, Peruvian elongated skulls, and a number of child sacrifices found high among the mountains of the Andes do not share these same easily identifiable, deliberate deformations. In other words, 
These pharaohs and other elongated skulls, concluded after in-depth analysis of their compositions, seem to have actually been their natural shape, allowing for a brain mass far insuperior to that of the human skull. Are these elongated skulls undoubtedly consisting of a far greater size brain space found among ancient ruins we cannot replicate, merely a convenient coincidence? Or were they indeed an ancient race of beings we are yet to be made aware of by an academia clearly attempting to conceal vast portions of ancient history? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Many people assume that ancient astronaut theories are nothing more than modern pseudoscience, holding no credence within reality. However, this is a mistake. The idea of ancient visitors from other planets in distant galaxies has been around since the beginning of human history. Although the theory has undoubtedly gained tremendous popularity over the past few decades, nearly every ancient tribe and civilization found on Earth, regardless of geographical location, have a story regarding visitors from other planets. Our choice of the most compelling would have to be that of the Dogons in Africa, one of the oldest surviving tribes on Earth. They not only have a legend which tells of alien visitors, but they retained invaluable data, reliable knowledge which was passed down from generation to generation. Details surrounding their ancient visitors' home solar system Details that at the time, modern civilization had yet to discover. Known as the Nomo, the Dogon tell of giant reptilians who had traveled here from a small sister star of Sirius, a star with a 40-year orbit that the Dogon still celebrate every 40 years. What is remarkable about their claims, however, is the details they give regarding the Sirius system and indeed the Nomo's home star a tiny star which our modern telescopes did not confirm the existence of until several years after the first cataloguing of this information. Another strange reaction to these remarkable experiences within these ancient cultures is a wanting to replicate the appearance of these entities. These interplanetary visitors often brought gifts in the form of knowledge. Due to these revelations, many of our ancestors have perceived these beings as godlike. The teaching of agriculture, the gift of hops, cannabis. The Dogon state that hemp was a gift from the Nomo. Indeed, the dog star is the source of the plant's name. Even strawberries, among many other living things, and ingenious techniques of managing such, have been said throughout antiquity, indeed throughout the world's cultures, to have first arrived here on Earth in the form of gifts from these beings. The Dogu, Dogu meaning clay figure, could be seen as commemorative creations in memory of such entities visiting our planet in the past. Made during the late Jomon period over 10,000 years ago, made with such tremendous skill and artistic accuracy, you have to wonder if these were not created with the purpose of remembering a detailed image of our guests' appearances, then what else were they created for? Or more specifically, to look like? Interestingly, some of the figures appear to have been deliberately created missing limbs, resting on intricately made crutches. Was this done with a likeness to real beings, possibly battle-scarred from previous more hostile encounters? The Incas, Mayans, Aztecs, Dogons, indeed anywhere you look within antiquity, you will inevitably be confronted with fantastic tales of ancient visitors. Even detailed knowledge of things so far out, we cannot even confirm if what they say is true. With so many similar legends found all across the world regarding ancient astronauts, it's safe to say the truth is out there. The figurines of Ocambaro, a series of artistically driven figurines that perplex all who have the opportunity to examine them. They were discovered by German Waldemar Julstrold in July of 1944 within Acambaro, Mexico. They represent, among other things, unknown camels, animals, enormous ancient reptiles, and possibly even aliens. Various examples from the collection are currently on public display at the Museum of Acambaro. Charles Hapgood, historian of science at Keene College in New Hampshire, best known for his discoveries regarding the Piri Reis maps and ancient Antarctica, 
has also supported the claim that the figurines are genuine ancient artifacts, which show extinct animals, miniature goblin-esque creatures, and quite possibly ancient extraterrestrial beings. Due to these claims, and the many skeptics who were ferociously arguing against such a posit, official radiocarbon dating was arranged and conducted in the late 60s, using organic materials from their surfaces. However, to academia's chagrin, the results indicated dates of around 6,500 years old, this based on three samples. Yet, amazingly, the results were ignored in favor of persistence, that they are nothing but modern souvenirs, made for the tourist industry. None of the publicly displayed examples resemble any known extinct dinosaur. Instead, it is suggested that they are representations of once living animals. Although the carbon dating had proven their authenticity, skeptics were still arguing that they were a modern hoax. A few years later, thermoluminescent tests were agreed upon by all as being sufficient enough to establish the figure's approximate date of manufacture. So, in 1972, Froelich Ramey of Pennsylvania Museum conducted this analysis. He also obtained dates of well over 4,500 years. Indeed, even their excavation was observed by a trained archaeologist known as Charles de Peso. It seems that no matter what certain individuals try, in their attempts to discredit the authenticity of the Acambaro figures, all they seem to accomplish is validating them further. Although some of the more compelling figures have disappeared over the years, the vast portion of these mysterious and perplexing artifacts remain on public display. Who made the Acambaro figures? What do most of them depict? With attitudes as they are within mainstream academia, it's a battle to establish the facts surrounding such relics. A battle we are slowly winning. When they land and the hatch opens, perhaps we will be looking at ourselves in the mirror. Many of you will be aware of the interstellar traveler, which visited our solar system from a galaxy far, far away a few years ago. Named Oumuamua, it is now recognized as the first known interstellar object ever successfully detected as it passed through our solar system. Formally designated 1-2017-U1, it was discovered on the 19th of October 2017 by Robert Work while using the Pan-STARRS telescope at the Haleakala Observatory within Hawaii. He spotted the mysterious object 40 days post-solar transit on the 9th of September that year. Many people have wondered about the true origins and indeed true identity of the object, yet few have received the backlash which Avi Loeb experienced on November of 2018 when he published a new research paper in an astrophysics journal. Scientists publish thousands of research papers every year. These papers will often attract little public attention. However, Loeb's latest work gained a suspiciously high level of controversy and rejection when he dared to cover the rather taboo subject within this so-called official field, aliens. The subject of the paper was the mysterious supposed space rock. He posits that it likely traveled for billions of years, past countless other stars, before reaching our own. Eventually, it will cross the edge of our solar system and into interstellar space again. The leading hypothesis among astronomers is that Oumuamua is an odd-looking comet a remnant of another solar system, kicked out by natural forces and sent barreling through the cosmos. Loeb, however, offered a rather different explanation. Quote, Oumuamua could be a probe, one deliberately sent to our solar system by an alien civilization. The detection of extraterrestrial beings, the most significant scientific discovery in human history, if we were ever told about such discoveries, of course, one must remember that as a civilization, many believe systems openly objective to the possibility of alien life, many of which are over a millennial old. The thought of finding sapient life beyond Earth, of learning that we are not alone, however, is the pursuit of countless individuals within the modern world. So it is no surprise that his opinions have been so widely debated. But additionally, there is seemingly another possible reason for why the paper was so widely reported on. This being the fact that Loeb is, in fact, 
a tenured Harvard professor within the astronomical department. Quote, if this was some random astronomer that you had never heard of from, say, Equatorial Guinea, you probably wouldn't write a story on it, says Brian Gensler, the director of the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics and a former colleague of Loeb's at Harvard. He continued, There's a lot of astronomers that have outlandish ideas, and most of them aren't taken seriously by the community, and most of the time the media don't really give attention to them. End quote. Loeb has two decades worth of experience and is well regarded in the field. So, regardless of what others would like him to believe, his opinions matter. Was Oumuamua really an ancient alien's exploratory craft, one spying on ours and many other solar systems? If it is, it means we are indeed not alone. What's more, it means we have undoubtedly been found. So, the professor's opinions, no matter how controversial, we find highly compelling.